Hello and welcome sci-fi modeling fans. Well, we're here today at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. And as you can see behind me, we have the classic Galileo 7 spacecraft from the original Star Trek TV series. And we're here today to take an up-close and personal look at this. We traveled all the way from San Antonio today. We've also met up with some of our fellow modelers from the Sci-Fi Model Action Forums. We're all having a great time. We're going to be looking at the shuttlecraft and we're going to be going on and taking a tour later of the Saturn V rocket, which was actually going to be used as Apollo 18 on one of the final flights to the moon. So stay tuned, guys. We've got some really exciting stuff. We'll be back in just a second. We're going to show you an up-close view of the Galileo. Be right back with that. So here we are, everybody, for our up-close and personal tour of the fabulous Galileo 7 shuttlecraft. She appears before us today just like she did in the original Star Trek television series seen in the 1960s. I saw my first episode back in the mid-70s, and at that time I never dreamed that I'd be so close to the ship that I could literally reach out and touch it. And as you can see in these shots, she's been beautifully restored. Everything's been captured from her original two-tone paint job in gray and white to all the details on her engine nacelles. She looks just like she did on the original television show. I was amazed. Moving towards the rear of the Galileo now, we see that there's some interesting signs posted. There's some information here about the full-size prop that was used on the original television series. The actual ship only appeared in three episodes of classic Star Trek. They were Journey to Babel, The Galileo 7, and Metamorphosis. After that, she was never used again. She was left to languish outside for nearly 50 years before some great people came along and did this beautiful restoration on it. And you can see that the Johnson Space Center has some excellent plans for this in store. There will be a three-quarter sized hangar bay built for permanent display of the shuttlecraft and will eventually be moved into the cafeteria area. I was really curious about how this rear area was lit, so I had a peek inside the edge and I could see some LED tape. Now that's pretty familiar. Down here we can see the metal landing strut. I suspect this and maybe some parts of the nacelles are the only things that are left of the original studio prop. Most of the wood was severely rotted and had to be completely replaced. But that's okay. She's a great replica and a true representation of how the ship looked on the original television series. I'm so glad I got to come down to the Johnson Space Center and see the shuttle in all its glory. Seeing it up close and impersonal was a real treat, and I hope thousands of Star Trek fans just like me will get to see the Galileo and relive those fond memories that we all have of that classic television show known as Star Trek. I'm extremely pleased that this important part of science fiction history has been preserved, and now has a permanent home at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Live long and prosper, Galileo. Well, hey, everybody, we're set up here next to the Galileo, and we've got a couple of our members from Sci-Fi Model Action here today with us, guys. We've got Mr. Dave Pashtag, known as Wolf359, uh, that's Dave there on the left, and Mr. Adam Corvell, who goes by Mr. Ataz over at our forums. Guys, what's your impressions of the Galileo as you see it here in front of you today? Well, they did a uh, lovely restoration, to say the least. Uh, it's nice to have a piece of history like this, and uh, hopefully we'll have this here for some time. Excellent. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. They did a really good job of restoring it. Uh, looks really fantastic from the pictures where they found it in the junkyard, that's for sure. <laughs> and like in the cells a lot, or at the different color actions that they did on it. But the painting and everything looks good. Definitely. That's great, guys. Now, for our people out there in the audience, would you recommend, is, is it worth it to drive all the way down to Houston to see this thing? Oh, yes, most definitely. I came Certainly. from Illinois, and it's definitely worth the trip, so. Excellent, guys. All right, we're going to go on, guys. We're going to take a look at the Saturn V coming up next. We'll see you back with that in just a little bit. We're off to see the mighty Saturn V rocket. Only in Texas will you see a longhorn steer grazing the green, completely oblivious to the giant machine which is stored just inside.
Before we stepped inside the building to see the Saturn V, we paused to take in the display of these two historic rockets. The rocket you see here is the Mercury Redstone. The rocket stands approximately 85 feet tall. This rocket, dubbed Little Joe, was first developed by NASA to boost the Apollo space capsule into high-altitude Earth orbit. The rocket at the top was used for testing purposes to separate the capsule from the main body in case of an emergency. In the early 1960s, the United States was falling behind the Soviet Union in the space race. However, all that changed on May 5, 1961, when America launched its first astronaut into orbit from Cape Canaveral, Florida, aboard a Mercury Redstone rocket. That man was Alan Shepard. Shortly thereafter, on May 25, 1961, President John F. Kennedy announced to the world that America intended to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. That program was known as Apollo. The incredible Saturn V rocket. Standing at over 361 feet tall, its five massive F-1 engines were capable of producing more than six million pounds of lift. It could also travel speeds in excess of 25,000 miles per hour. There were a total of 17 Apollo missions flown using the Saturn V rocket. The ship you see here would have been Apollo 18. However, in 1972, the program was canceled due to lack of public interest. The Smithsonian Institution has meticulously restored this rocket. We were in awe of its condition and the sheer size. She looks like she's ready to go to the moon tomorrow. This is the powerful second stage booster. These rockets would be fired to help propel the ship through the high Earth atmosphere and into high altitude Earth orbit. After reaching high Earth orbit, the third stage would be fired, often accompanied by a very familiar line. Houston to flight, you are go for the moon. Here we can see the housing for the LEM, or Lunar Excursion Module. Think of it as a giant space garage. The vehicle would be stored in this throughout the flight. This would be the vehicle that would actually touch down on the surface of the moon. Here you can see the contact point inside the housing where the vehicle is actually attached. the crew capsule and command module. Three men would spend over a week in this tiny cramped area and the capsule would be the only thing that would return to Earth after a long journey to the moon and back. From the tip of the command module to the five giant F1 engines Again, we were awestruck by this incredible machine. The magnificent Saturn V rocket is a testimony to man's ability to achieve the impossible and for his continued strive to explore the unknown. <laughs>